get into the detail so this picture give you a brief idea about left heart failure see what is happening here left side venous return from lungs so we are getting that venous return blood i told you our left atrium is pumping or uh, left atrium works as a tank reservoir in uh, one of the phase of cardiac cycle so left atrium is getting what blood venous blood from our lungs so after oxygenation we are getting oxygenated blood into left atrium it goes to left ventricle so if the left atrium and left ventricle is not in normal or if it has some problem then what happens pulmonary congestion occurs increased pulmonary venous pressure and what is this meant by every alveoli is filled with edema because of the congestion and pulmonary edema so what happens gaseous exchange is impossible breathing is getting tougher that's why these people present with dyspnea orthopnea you know the difference between orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea right orthopnea means while lying down they will get whenever they they lie down they will get dyspnea now paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea in the sense when the person sleep and afterward they get up suddenly with nocturnal dyspnea in the night because of the venous return when the person lie down at night time suddenly they get that dyspnea because of this venous return and pulmonary congestion features and yeah what happened next so left sided it is supplying to our systemic i mean it is supplying our vital organs right from the left side of the heart systemic circulation starts so supply body organs so failure leads to low organ perfusion and hypoxia so all the vital organs will be affected again even a uh, especially our lung this one uh, brain what is hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy due to hypoxia there will be ischemia and then there will be encephalopathy feature encephalopathy feature in the sense they will have seizures then um, meningeal irritation all such things with hypoxia and ischemic features okay so without oxygen am as good as that so all the vital organs also will be affected so this is a brief idea about left heart failure and it is very easy for you people to uh, write the pathophysiology or to imagine what happens in the left heart failure so hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy you keep in mind and this heavy wet lungs means pulmonary congestion most commonly affected organ in left heart failure is our lungs because you know because the venous pressure is increased and pulmonary congestion in turn result in the pulmonary edema so because of that they will come up with dyspnea orthopnea and pnd okay so coming into left heart failure these all points are important okay exam point of view so i told you what happens actually in left heart failure pathophysiology is very easy you can write by yourself if you are writing any descriptive kind of exam but or for your um, ipg et and all those exam you can also like think of cardiac cycle it will come easily for you people if you see a question regarding heart failure features and all yeah it's it is understandable right now these points for the sake of exam remember this so left ventricle fails as a effective pump no so left ventricle fails as a effective pump now left ventricle cannot eject blood delivered from right heart through pulmonary circulation so it cannot eject blood again what happens you can imagine so aorta cannot eject proper blood and there will be hypoxic features in all the vital organs then blood backs up into the cir pulmonary circulation so what happens if blood backs up there will be again congestion pulmonary hypertension pulmonary edema and see that you read more about pulmonary edema and pulmonary hypertension what are the characteristic signs and symptoms in this okay then increased pressure in pulmonary capillaries forces blood out of the capillaries into the interstitial space and alveoli so there will be edema because of this they will have pulmonary edema so because of this blood backs up into pulmonary circulation there will be an increased pressure in the pulmonary capillaries capillary so it push out the blood from the capillaries into the interstitial space and alveoli and again what happens so there will be increase in respiratory work and decrease gas exchange occur 
So you know the partial pressure of oxygen will be decreased, partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be increased, all such things. And the features of this will be dyspnea, orthopnea, and that coughing. Then uh, sputum will be uh, very particular here. Read about all this, okay? Later when we see respiratory system, we will see more detail about this. The sputum characteristic of pulmonary edema, that pink frothy sputum, many such things are there. And pink puffers, blue bloaters, all those things will help, be helpful for you to differentiate between pulmonary and uh, uh, like right heart failure and left heart failure. Okay, so this is what you should know, basic thing about left heart failure. Now, hope I am clear. Now, like common causes for left heart failure is acute MI, chronic hypertension, dysrhythmias, okay, so arrhythmias and chronic hypertension, acute MI, these are the most common causes for left heart failure. There are many causes that injure the result in left heart failure, but most important causes are this one, okay, keep in mind. Now, right-sided heart failure. Now you can only imagine what happens. So right-sided heart is not functioning properly. So what happens when the superior vena cover, it, when it gets the deoxygenated blood from the upper part of the body and inferior vena cover, when that also gets blood from the lower part of the body, the heart is not functioning properly. It cannot move the blood properly from right atrium to right ventricle. It cannot move blood from right ventricle into pulmonary artery. So, there will be peripheral venous congestion. There will be backflow here. So, this deoxygenated blood, when it goes to kidney, when it goes to liver, when it goes to uh, like every uh, vital organs, what happens? See, if it is going into uh, our liver, what happens? There will be hepatomegaly. That's why this JVP will be increased. You know why JVP is increased here? This uh, internal jugular vein is directly connected, right internal jugular vein is directly connected into superior vena cava. That's why in congestive heart failure or right sided heart failure, congestive heart failure includes both right sided and left sided heart failure. Okay, so mostly in right sided heart failure, JVP will be increased. Jugular venous pulsation you have to check clinically. Okay, so and again. The superior vena cava, how is the superior vena cava and portal system is coming? It is directly related to liver also. So all the systems, all these organs will be affected. So renal failure with azotemia features. Azotemia means blood urea nitrogen will be increased, creatinine level will be increased. All those renal failure features all together is known as azotemia. Okay. Then peripheral edema. Peripheral edema, when there is peripheral venous condition, again that blood will be pushed into interstitial space. So, the patient comes up with peripheral edema. Hmm? And again ascites. Ascites because of portal hypertension. Again, there will be increased fluid collection in the peritoneum. So, that is one of the important feature of ascites. Now, I think you got an idea how to correlate pathophysiology and symptoms of right heart failure. So, see, this is what the common and important symptoms and the pathophysiology of right-sided heart failure. And left heart failure is the most common cause of right heart failure. Increased pressure in pulmonary circulation, they will have chronic lung disease. So, again, which again give more workload to left heart. If left heart has more workload and if left heart is failed, it in turn result in right heart failure. That back pressure and this, uh, if one part of the uh, heart is not working, automatically the other part will have that more work than the other part. So, automatically that part will get affected. So, that's why it is told that Right heart failure, left heart failure is most common cause of right heart failure. See the cause. So, because uh, uh, increased pressure in pulmonary circulation, they will have chronic lung disease, core pulmonary will be there and left heart failure is the most common cause of right heart failure. So, right side pumps blood into the lungs. Failure happens because of increased pulmonary vascular pressure. So, all these points are important. Write down and right side. Mostly venous return from 
what happens in right side normally venous return from body organs except lens all the body organs venous return is into right side of that so and this failed when this system is failed which leads into venous congestion of the body organs okay so right ventricle fails as a effective pump right ventricle cannot eject blood returning through vena cava blood backs up into system of circulation then there will be increased pressure in <coughs> systemic capillaries forces fluid out of the capillaries in into interstitial edema that's what i told and tissue edema occurs so these are the most common findings of right heart failure hope i'm clear now what most common causes left heart failure itself other causes are copd chronic pulmonary hypertension congenital heart disease pulmonary embolism these are the other causes of right heart failure you can just imagine okay what happens in copd when the lungs is fully affected when the lungs again um, copd include emphysema bronchial asthma all such things so the pathogenesis and pathology you know so lungs itself is affected so our heart is not getting oxygenated proper oxygenated blood and finally left heart failure will be the result which in turn uh, result in the right heart failure again pulmonary hypertension is because of left heart failure or due to some other reasons like copd then constrictive lung disease i mean interstitial lung disease or any other diseases like core pulmonary in anything would be the reason which in turn result in the Uh, left heart failure which again comes into right heart failure or directly which will affect right heart and congenital heart failure this is congenital heart failure you have different congenital heart disease like a, uh, we have synotic heart disease and asynotic heart disease then in that we have tetralogy of phthalate then transposition of iota then we have asg vst if all this anything among this is the cause then it uh, result in the improper function of the heart which further result in either left heart failure or right heart failure and where the cause is congenital heart disease okay then pulmonary embolism as i told which is the cause when in which is the finding in different uh, like lung condition any lung chronic lung condition which has a finding like pulmonary embolism or it could be a pulmonary embolism could be a, a result of some other chronic disease okay so like that you have to correlate then you are not going to i mean lose any marks for your apgt also even when you sit in the clinic you can imagine if a patient come up with emphysema features like blue bloaters pink puffers and if they have cyanosis and they have dyspnea or tocnia and they may have this increased jvp jugular venous pulsation and edema then you should rule out what is the cause accordingly we can treat the patient